is we're disconnecting the storage. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely disconnected. Um, yeah, let's do that one again. We have um, divided the tear teardown into two parts. So uh, first we tear down the main part of the switch where all the yeah, where all the console is and we have also tear down the controller. So Alex goes through uh, how some of these materials are manufactured. I thought it was really awesome how um, a lot of the parts or most of the plastic parts are um, injection molded, um, just ABS plastic. Um, it's been used for video games and video game controllers um, for like for, for, for quite a long time um, due to its uh, high strength, uh, resistant to scratching, um, and it just allows you to build really versatile and really, really, really coolly designed um, products. So the Nintendo Switch comes with this, this main body here um, and these two Joy-Con controllers. Um, it's really, really hard wearing, really strong um, and really resistant to, um, to impact. Um, so it's all fixed at the moment with these, um, these tri-ring screws here. Um, they're Nintendo's way of stopping people from getting inside the console, messing around with it. Um, and, and making sure they go to them for repairs. So we'll, we'll start by taking out these four screws on the back and we'll, we'll see what's inside. Um, the next thing to do is to remove these five Phillips head um, along the Joy-Con rail. Um, so the Joy-Con rail is actually made of metal. Um, it'll literally just be sheet metal that's um, formed and shaped into place. Um, so I'm just gonna remove these five screws now and we should be able to get into the nitty gritty of the case. This first part is covering all the electronics and, and the good stuff hidden underneath. Uh, this is essentially just a, a, a piece of sheet metal. Um, this will have been stamped and stamped into place. You can tell because it's got this um, these complex ribs in here, um, and it will just be cut and then stamped by machine um, on, on, on a production line. Really, one of the main functions of this part is also help the refrigeration. So there is like a, a lot of components that help to the cooling of the system, but this is one of the main functions of the. Uh, of this part. The next thing to do is um, to remove this little screw here. Um, what you're seeing in this part here is actually the, the, the SD card tray. Um, so we can remove this screw and then pry this off. And you're okay just to pull this one up. And the next bit to do is to remove this, um, remove this, remove this, remove this tray. And there's six Phillips head screws connecting this to the main board. Here on this part, we can see the speakers. We see here the cooling system. So if I'm not wrong here, underneath there is like the main, the main processor. The main processor is transferring all the heat through this uh, pipe. And then all this heat is like uh, released through this fan over here. Here and here we see thermal, thermal paste. It's a good term, thermal conductor while it's an uh, electronic insulator. The first thing that ha it has here is the input for the audio, um, I think like five millimeters input. And also here we have like a chip, which I believe the function of this chip is to read the information from the cartridge, so from the different games. And you just have to pull this one up uh, and then we can remove the, 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 the whole board. Yeah, which I'm just gonna do with my hand. because that's gonna Probably be turn it around and see. There we go, there you are. Yeah, so as I mentioned, here is the, like the input for the audio and here is just like the physical space for the, for the cartridge. So just to remove these three screws, um, now we've had to tear and, um, and lift this up a little bit. Um, so the reason this, this foam is actually here is to reduce the vibrations of, of this against uh, this metal case here. Um, they put this, this, this fan in place. It's interesting to see how the heat is transferred from one board, one point of the board to another. Uh, like in a lot of computers, the fan is directly on top of the processor. But because this needs, needs to be designed, like, yeah, and it needs to be designed very compact, they need to put the fan in another place and then they transport the heat from one point to the other. So what we're doing next here is we're disconnecting the storage. <laughs> the next thing we're going to do is going to remove the speaker and these are glued in so you've literally got to wedge and pry them out. Yeah, that tool is very convenient. Yeah. Man. Um, so what's really, really cool to note about this um, is you can see it's actually, it's actually like sealed, um, just like you see in Apple AirPods. Um, so um, if some water gets inside your switch, 
the actual uh, switch will not be okay. You can see the uh, water damage indicator here, but your um, actual speakers are probably weaker. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so the next thing we're gonna do is just disconnect um, all these remaining ribbon cables that are connecting the uh, PCB um, to the main body of the material. Um, and these are going to the volume, to the power, um, and, and, and various other places. This is the storage, and below the storage there, there is the communication chip, and it's covered by this uh, metal piece. So we were also discussing that it, uh, this piece serves not only as a, not only for protection, but perhaps it can also be a shield for a noise, for electromagnetic noise, because here we have the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth. It's important to chill this uh, electromagnetically because uh, ambience um, waves can affect the reading of the of the signals. Cool, so this is the fan here, um, and we're just gonna take that out now so that we have a little bit of room um, to take our, our, our PCB out. Yeah, so I've just, just unscrewed them. I've just gone to take out the screws. Um, and this is quite a cool thing to note here. Um, underneath these screws, there are these little like rubber, like almost like washers, um, that are obviously there as vi vibration mounts. Again, um, this whole console has been, um, been so thoroughly um, thought out um, in, in regards to vibration. So now we can take the whole, the whole fan base out. Uh, there is three things. So the one, this one is the one that is like managing the charge uh, because when you have the USB-C, um, it can help charge the battery, but then all the energy from the battery is used to fit in all the circuit. These uh, chips over here, they are in charge of uh, managing the power, um, so putting up uh, and or low the voltage. So some components need 3.7 volts, some needs 5 volts, and uh, different com components need uh, different voltages. So this, uh, this component over here does that job. Okay, cool, so our next uh, next stage is just to remove the, the whole PCB, uh, now we've removed all the fixings from it, um, and this is basically the, the, the powerhouse. Yeah, so this um, it's the motherboard, as we have seen these, the, the whole Nintendo had in total two PCBs, one that was for the reading of the cartridge and the, uh, and the audio, uh, the most important component here that is not visible it's underneath this metal shield. It's the, the processor that I think is an NVIDIA processor. Um, and here you have memory. So as we said, here on top there was the storage, but here underneath we have the, the RAM that is like the short uh, term memory of the, of the circuit. And yeah, like the motherboard has um, two sides. So you can see it's a very complex um, I'm not familiar with what these components are, but you can see that it's a very elaborate uh, PCB. Um, and something interesting to mention is how this is done. So you can see that there is um, a lot of cables, we can call them like that, like basic, uh, like in an easy way. Um, it's very complicated to design these, uh, these routes and the PCB communicates from one side of the PCB to the through the other side of the PCB. So there is like two visible sides, and they communicate through these uh, jello circles. That these jello circles are called uh, through holes. So it's like a bridge between one floor of the PCB and another. And actually, in some PCBs, not I don't think in this one, but uh, in some PCBs that they are very thick, they have like different layers inside. Uh, they can have like five layers and there's like cables inside the PCB as such. Okay guys, um, so next we're gonna take apart one of these, uh, these Joy-Con controllers. So the funny thing about these buttons is that you think there are uh, these letters on top um, are actually uh, printed on um, and that is really common across video games but obviously if you're playing this game a lot it's going to wear um, so you, that's why you see stuff on like xbox 360 and i think even the xbox one um, correct me if i'm wrong they've got engraved engraved buttons um, so it's more likely to wear but i actually really like this it's, it's, it's very nintendo style to have visible buttons um, it's very clean um, and, and, and very very nice design um, but what's 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 very cool about these specific buttons is the print it's not print um, it's done with two-part injection molding. This 
uh, this button, this letter, sorry, actually runs the whole way through the button. Um, so it, the more it wears down, you're, you're, you're not gonna change what you're seeing at all. Uh, let me show you, I'm actually gonna ruin it now. As you can see, I've taken a huge chunk out of that. You see from the side, um, and there you see it. The letter runs pretty much the entire way through it. I'm just getting more, more, more white and black plastic just chipping off. And I'm sure you want to see what's on the inside because um, that's really where the exciting parts are. <laughs> There we go. So be careful again, not just to rip this thing open because um, we've got two components inside um, connecting it. There we are, you see those two ribbon cables in there. So yeah, we've disconnected the, uh, disconnected the battery. Um, the next thing to do is just to take the battery out of the housing. Again, you're gonna hear it's glued in, so you're gonna hear a little bit of a bit of resistance, but, but don't be too, too afraid. If you disconnected it, it should be fine. Now we're going to disconnect the battery housing from the PCB um, so that we can see what's underneath. And again, there's a little antenna in here. Um, if you just disconnect that. This is uh, full of sensors and this controller also needs to communicate um, somehow. And the way that it communicates, um, it has two sensors. One is for uh, NFC, that, that stands for Near Field Communications. And there is also the Bluetooth, uh, I'm not sure if it's both transmitter and receiver, but this would be the Bluetooth model. And the main way how it, so that's how it communicates wirelessly, but this controller also communicates with the Nintendo uh, through, a, through, the, through cable uh, that we have seen here in this ribbon. And on this, on the on this part over here, on the bottom, um, that's how it connects to the Nintendo. That's how it gets uh, both power and it communicates all the signals of all the inputs uh, in the board. The main body of the Joy-Con itself actually has two buttons. Um, this one here, and you can see just in this tiny spot here. I don't know if you can get that. The tiny, tiny button, and all that. Responsiveness is coming from this tiny little button, this tiny little button housing unit. Whereas this one here is very, very different. Um, this one, the button is in here, um, and this button has a bit more, um, a bit more responsiveness. So when you push it, it springs back up a bit more. I think it's also very, very cool to notice again. Um, you can see all the um, all, all, all standard marks from injection molding um, in here. Um, it's also, look how smooth the walls are here. Um, that's like known as a draft angle. Um, so, it's, so it can easily be ejected from the mold. Um, otherwise you have problems with um, uh, the plastic not flowing into all the, the, the parts of the, the mold correctly. Um, and you definitely have a problem, the part actually like leaving the mold because it gets stuck in there and you, 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 you get um, incomplete parts. You, as you take this apart, it, you start to kind of see just how cool all this is. Um, underneath here, I'll hold this in place right now. Um, oh, I lost one anyway. Um, all the buttons. So this here is just a bit of um, uh, a bit of bit of, bit of uh, injection molded rubber, um, and this will just sit on the other side to make it a bit more tactile when you when you're pushing buttons. What button have I missed? Plus button. Oh, there we go. I'll I'll, um, I'll, I'll put them over here just so we don't we don't lose them. Um, and you've, you've, got, you've got, got the same here, so it's, it's very cool. There you go, there's a board, Do you can talk you through that one. Yeah, just that basically all the mechanical parts that they are just in touch with these uh, little buttons. So you can see it's like a small membrane. And here you have also the main buttons, that is just like a membrane that it's uh, closing the circuit to act as the button. Thank you very much for watching. This has been our teardown of the Nintendo Switch. Make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and comment down below what you'd like to see us tear down in the future.